to a special edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at the puzzle on the screen, which is called Tapa Sudoku. Well, I say we're going to be taking a look, and in fact, Thomas Snyder is going to be taking a look. Now, if you don't know Thomas's name, let me fill you in. Thomas is the three-time World Sudoku Champion. He is also the former World Puzzle Champion. He is an, uh, a complete genius. He is... Um, you know, when I used to go to the World Puzzle Championship and the World Sudoku Championship, you're surrounded by incredibly intelligent people. And even amongst, you know, even in that coterie, Thomas sort of stands above as a man apart. He is an incredible brain, a, ge a genuine genius. And we're thrilled um, that we've managed to get this footage of him solving this puzzle. Now, how do we get this footage? Let me tell you the story about that. The, the puzzle on the screen was constructed by Serkan Urekli, um, the wonderful, wonderful puzzle constructor from Turkey. And um, Serkan has a new book out, um, which uh, and the book is quite interesting because you can play it, I believe, on paper, but you can also play all the puzzles online um, uh, as well. And all of the puzzles are easy to medium rated tapper puzzles. Now, the reason this is interesting, well, there's many reasons this is interesting, but among those reasons is that Serkan invented the puzzle tapper. Uh, and it's a puzzle that's become a staple of the World Puzzle Championships. So uh, who better, basically, to showcase the form? Um, so there's a link that you can use to go and find that book. Uh, I think it's, it costs $1.50 to buy the book, and I wholeheartedly recommend it to you, um, especially if you're a sort of a newcomer to the world of puzzles. Um, because this will certainly showcase Tapper uh, in, in the perfect way. Um, now, when Serkan let us know about, about the Tapper book, he also was kind enough to send us this puzzle, um, which, which, which is the one that we've got Thomas solving. Now, uh, once, once we found out that Thomas was going to solve it, Mark and I both had a go at it uh, for a laugh. Uh, I will tell you it took Mark over an hour. It took me over an hour. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how embarrassed to be about that. It takes Thomas 15 minutes. It is ridiculous how quickly he is able to hone in on some of the, the logic in the, in this puzzle. This is not an easy puzzle. This, by the way, yeah, the Tapper Sudoku we're going to be talking about in this video is not like the Tapper that appear in Serkan's book. Serkan's book is designed to be, you know, easy, approachable puzzles. This puzzle is not easy and it's not very approachable. It's, it's really quite hard and it's got an incredibly long rule set. So what I'm going to do to start this video um, is I'm going to talk you through the rule set and then we're going to watch Thomas solve and to try and, I suppose, showcase just, just how clever what you're seeing is, uh, I might pause the video occasionally and just talk through how Thomas has found a deduction um, and hopefully that will that will bring it Bring, bring the genius you're watching to the fore. Um, I think the, probably though the best way to really appreciate what Thomas is doing is to try the puzzle yourself. So if you can find the time, do have a go at it. There will be a link to it under this video. Um, now, the only other thing to mention is that Mark and I have been batting back and forward how to show this video for ages because we've had it for a couple of weeks. And, you know, what, what we didn't want to do is to just put a video on the channel of Thomas speed solving a puzzle without context because it's 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 very hard to understand what's going on. Um, so uh, one of the things we, we, we thought we might do is that I might solve the puzzle and then insert bits of my solve partway through Thomas's solve to sort of explain what Thomas was doing. But that proved to be an absolute editing nightmare. So what we've done is I have recorded a solve of this. It's not a live solve. It, it's um, so it's a solve after I've solved it. So it's not, uh, but it, it is a solve where I go through all the logic. Um, and if you're interested in that and going through the, the logic of every single deduction in the puzzle, that's going to be available for our patrons over on Patreon. Um, but otherwise, just enjoy Thomas's solve and enjoy watching a bit of bit of genius because it's not often we get to see genuine genius. Now let's just talk about the rules of this quickly. Uh, the rules are as follows, and if you're familiar with Tapper, uh, that will be very, this will be very intuitive to you. If you've never seen a Tapper before, then you might have to concentrate a bit more. So we have to shade some cells, some of the empty cells in the grid grey, to create a single connected wall. Numbers in a circled cell indicate the length of consecutive shaded blocks in the neighbouring cells. And if there is more than one number in a circled cell, then there must be at least one unshaded cell 
between the grey cells. So, so what that means is, let's look at this 7 uh, and this 2, 4 quickly. The 7 is telling us there are at least, well, there are exactly 7 shaded grey cells in sequence around this 7 clue. Now remember, circled clues, uh, oh, I can't remember if we've got to this part of the rules yet, but, just, but basically clue cells cannot contain shaded digits. So that seven is actually a gimme straight away. We have to put that shape around the seven. Now let's look at the two, four. Well, this is telling us that in these cells around the two, four clue, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a run of two cells and a run of four cells in some order, but we don't know the order. So what it could be is those four separated by an unshaded cell always, and then these two, or it could alternatively be these four separated by a shaded cell. It doesn't have to be one set shaded cell, or it does in this instance, but you can see, for example, on this one, one clue, you could have a one here and a one here, and then the rest of the clues would have to be green. Something like that would be a legitimate way of filling this one, one clue. So this is what we have to do. Oh, this is part of what we have to do, but it's by no means all. Let me read you the rest of the rules. Um, cells with numbers cannot be shaded. Okay, I should have got to that. And the shaded cells cannot form a two by two square anywhere in the grid. So what we can't do is if we found out those two were shaded, we can't make those two both shaded. That's a two by two of gray, and that's illegal in a tupper puzzle. Now, there's also a Sudoku going on under, under this. So we also need to make sure that all unshaded cells of the grid contain the digits one to seven once each in every row and column. All cells marked with circles should contain at least one digit. The digits in circles are valid clues for tapper and pencil mark clues for Sudoku. You should place one or more digits in the empty circles, but you cannot make additions to given clues. All circled cells may not be given, i.e. there may be some cells without circles that are valid clues for both the tapper and the Sudoku. Now I know that's complicated and it might take you a couple of times to read through it and try and understand it. But in essence, what we need to do is to use the circles to create a valid tapper. And we also need to bear in mind that there are going to be blank cells. This is a 14 by 14 grid. So in every row and every column, there are going to be seven blank cells which, which are going to be used as Sudoku digits. And we also know, because we know the circled, circled cells have to be valid clues for the Sudoku and for the tapper, every circled cell in the grid is effectively a Sudoku digit. We just have to work out what it is. So where this 1-4 is, not only is this a 1-4 valid for the tapper, but it's telling us that the Sudoku digit that goes in this cell is a 1 or a 4. So that's important to recognize. Now, let's watch Thomas solve this. Um, I'm just gonna get his, uh, I might have to resize the video slightly so that it fits in the screen. And here we go. Um, I'm not doing a very good job of this, but hopefully that's going to be about right anyway. Maybe a bit bigger. I'll make Thomas as big as we can. Um, there we go, apologies that I'm just trying to do this on the screen. And I'm going to I'm going to start playing it now. I can tell you it takes him 15 minutes to solve, which is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to pause occasionally. I'm going to, I'm going to be talking quickly here because Thomas goes so fast um, that you'll have to forgive me. If you miss some logic, check out my video on Patreon, okay? But I will do my best to, to tell you as much as I can about what's going on, starting now okay so here he goes okay so he does the four clue I've, and he does he does both four clues instantly spots that he can do greens around these can see the seven we talked about that in the example um okay he gets, sees that there must be a circle clue must be correct for the tapper in the top left corner so this is a one the one four here is fixed there's a subtlety there let me just pause and talk about this subtlety thomas can work out he sees the four must be beneath it, but where is the one part of this tapper clue? Well, it can't be in this green cell here, because if it was, this clue would be unshaded, and then the gray tapper wouldn't form a wall, because this cell would be isolated. So Thomas appreciates this is where the gray goes, 
and therefore it mu and the grey must connect to the rest of the tapper so it comes out and shades here. I mean it's just super fast. Um, in fact let me just, how on earth has he got that so quickly there? Um, the answer to the OSE oh, and then he's avoiding a 2x2 two two there and that's going to make, allow him to fill the 7 in instantly. And, I mean he's done, he's 27 seconds into this already puts in the digits forced by the tapper into the circled cells. You can see this is 3, 4 or 5 now because it can't be a 2 because of this 2 in the top. <laughs> the speed is ridiculous. Um, I think that's all fairly straightforward what he's done there. He's got a 5 here. He knows that he's filling in, so that he uses the 1 in order to disambiguate the 5. The 1, 2 is done. And the 7 is done because this must be green in effect, this 2-4 clue. So this is, this is what world championship level speed looks like. I'm going to be fascinated. We've got so many clever people who watch these videos. If anyone can get anywhere near this, I will be astonished. Right, now this is a point where I think Thomas is about to showcase his absolute genius. Let me just see if he's going to see this now. I noticed the way he scans, he, sort of, he can record an incredible amount of information in his brain. You'll see he sort of oscillates between cells occasionally. And I think what he's doing there is he's imprinting onto his brain the fact that there is a, uh, a restriction in those two cells. I think that's a bit of Sudoku he's doing here in order to lock this as a six. Uh, can't quite see how he's done got this this as a green cell okay ah okay let's just pause there what he's noticed is that in this row he's got seven gray cells so he knows that the seven the other seven cells must all be sudoku digits and then he's used that um he's used the fact there's a five here to disambiguate the five and the seven so that was remarkably quick how how he how he spotted that Avoid a 2x2 two two here. He, Thomas's time on the clock now is 2.15. If you try this puzzle, you will not believe this. Right, OK, now we have to pause here because this is ludicrous to me. 2 minutes 32. Thomas puts in this, this grey cell. How has he got this? Now, this is, this is tricky. And in, in the video I've made, I explain this fully. I will try and, I'll try and talk you through it now. If you look at this part of the grid you can see there's an awful lot of green cells this is green remember the circled cells are green so this in effect is a green wall and think about this too which i know it's very difficult to see because when i pause the video up comes this tapa sudoku uh, thing but this two in the bottom left is absolutely critical because how can any gray cells in this region where i'm drawing the, i'm drawing a circle around the cursor here, how can any gray cells in that region connect to the rest of the tapper, connect to the rest of the grey cells via this two clue? And the answer is they can't, because the two clue is not big enough. Um, it, will, it only allows a consecutive sequence of two grey cells, and that's never going to be enough to allow the tapper to come into the two and exit it to get out. Now that means anything grey in this part of the grid can only get out to the rest of the tapper through this little alleyway, which is how Thomas has got this deduction. Pretty clever, eh? And now, okay, so now it looks like he's, he's looking at the count of green cells in this column and the count of gray and green in this column. He, yes, he's filling in, he's just, he's, he's doing, he's helping to see the walls now by filling them in green. A brief pause, this is lovely to see. Thank you, Thomas, for briefly pausing so that I can try catch up with whatever you're seeing. Okay, how on earth has he got that? Let me just think about that. So he thinks this cell has to be grey. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, this is a ridiculous deduction. Okay, in column four, there are at the moment six green cells. So the question to ask is, is it possible that both cells at the bottom of column four are green? And the answer to that's clearly no, because then there would be eight green cells in the column and the Sudoku would be broken. So Thomas knows there's at least one grey cell down here. 
But then he asks himself the question, well, how does that grey connect to the tapper? He knows it can't go via the two, because that's effectively a cul-de-sac. It stops anything getting out. So it must come through this little junction here. And that's how he's got this deduction. And that, of course, has finished column five now. It's finished the count of greys. And, OK, I can't quite see what he's doing now. He's clearly looking at something. He's counting something, I think, in that row. Oh, I see. Right, OK, so I can see something that he may spot. He may spot that's green, yeah. OK, how did he spot this was green? Well, he used this two clue. This two clue must have two grey cells in these three cells. Now, those two grey cells are going to complete the complement of grey cells for this row. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one of these two is seven. So Thomas was able to deduce that this must be green. Now remember, now we can use the corollary of all the logic Thomas has been doing to argue there must be grey connectivity down this string. Um, how does this connect to the tapper? Well, it can't get out via this two clue in the corner, so it must get out around the top, and that's going to allow Thomas to fill all of this. Get this five. Looks like he's got seven greys in column one now, so I suspect we'll see green, green, and we do. Um, Okay. This is such a treat. It really is to see somebody with this level of mental firepower just death. How is he doing this? Yeah, sorry. I'm not even I'm not even sure. I think hopefully that was just followed from some sort of logical deduction, but I I don't want to pause too much because I think it it ruins the effect. Okay, so he's now putting in some sudoku digits here. I think, uh, yeah, OK, there's an interesting point around this. I think that from a Sudoku perspective, Thomas noticed that three and four, which were the options equivalent to this limb, um, were not possible. So that you can see this can't be a four in this circle. So it must to be a correct tapper clue, therefore, it needs to be, or to be a correct Sudoku clue, it needs to have another option other than four, and therefore this had to be grey. And that disambiguated where the grey went around the two in the corner. Um, OK. So now, now he's doing some Sudoku in column two. The Sudoku parts of this, from what I remember when I solved it, are not monstrous. They're just very hard to, it's very hard to extract the point at which you should focus on Sudoku rather than Tapper. Um, and because the, because the Sudoku is disjointed in the sense that, you know, you're not just looking at um, a regular Sudoku pattern, it's, it's all over the place. It's very hard for me to scan at least. Okay, so it looks like he wants to disambiguate this. Okay, and he's been able to do that. That cell, I can yes, okay, I can see an arc. Right, I see how he got this cell to be green. If this cell was uh, a tapper cell, it would have to escape, and it would have to mean the cell beneath it was also tapper, and that would mean there would be eight grey cells in this column. So I think that's how Thomas has worked that, that worked out that this cell was green. He knows this is green because it's a circle. Um, okay, so he's just filling in options for that one. Let's put three in there. I think that might have the ability to be. Oh, you see, this could be a tapper, tapper gray cell here. That's why he's corrected this to a one or a three. He's got a one three pair in that column, which might help him. And I, yeah, I remember when I solved it, I haven't had an awful lot of trouble on the right hand side of the grid. I couldn't find um, the correct logic very quickly at all. Six minutes, that's what he's had at this point. Oh yeah, I see what he's done here. Okay, let's have a look at row three. Now, in this string of digits around this one, one clue, we've already got one of the ones, one of the grey ones in this corner. So only one of these three squares 
can be grey, and that means two of them must be green. And there's two green, therefore, three, four, five, six, seven green in the row. And that's allowed him to fill in these other grey cells, which is what he's just done there. That forces this cell in the two, I can see that. Forces this to be green, yeah, that all makes sense. He's got a correct count now on row four, so that's nice. Corrected this count to the five. Just by changing that to green, it needed to be green. Um, I love it when he pauses, actually. It, make, it makes me think he is human after all. Okay, he's got a correct count on this column, so he's grayed this. Now he's looking to avoid a 2x2 two two here. And that's allowed him to extend the logic for the... He's forced these two grays, which has forced the 2 clue. <laughs> um... Okay, what's the fun? Oh, that's, that's, is that, do I understand that? Yes, I do. Look, this is very nice use of the Sudoku. There's a four and a six looking at this, this cell. So in order to correct the count of the tapper, make this a correct tapper clue, it needed to not be four or six, and it had to be five, which gave the gray and allowed the two by two inference. That's, okay, that's green, obviously. So this is a 3-4 pair, yeah, I can see that. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sorry if I'm not filling you in on as much as I should be here. It's, it's reasonably difficult to keep track of all of the logic that Thomas is doing and relay it to you in any meaningful way. Oh, I've got a correct count on the bottom row now, which is obviously huge. Correct count on... Row 13. I don't know how it how, Let me just pause that. How did he know that this square? Oh, it's because it couldn't be a two. Yeah, it's lovely setting from Sircan here as well. So this had two around it, but this two here ruled this clue out from being a two. So to, to create a, a valid tapper entry also couldn't be a one, which would have been an option from the tapper perspective. It needed to become a three, and that filled this cell in as grey. Um, Okay, so in this column you can see we need twos, fours, and sevens. No idea how he managed to get this done so quickly. I think he literally scanned the two, four, and then knew he could fill them all in and did them backwards. Okay, so now, now you can see we're moving. A lot of the tapper is done, and we're looking, looking for a lot of the Sudoku stuff now. And even somebody who is a three-time world Sudoku champion just can't fill in a grid with this amount of, um, you know, the, the grey squares between the one to seven make it incredibly awkward to scan. He's having a think about whether that could legitimately be. Oh no, he he knows that he knows this is green now. So actually. As a small point there, this cell is actually now disambiguated because it can't contain a 1. From a tapper perspective, you can see the correct tapper clue for this is a 3. So Thomas will spot that in a moment or two. Okay, he's got the correct count on this row. Oh, this stuff around here was hor horrible for me. Very, very difficult. Um, let's see how Thomas deals with this. There's a pause. Okay, I, I think he must work out there's some sort of connectivity issue. Ah, yeah, there's definitely some sort of connectivity point. Yeah, let's just pause this here because even this green cell is a remarkable deduction to me. I don't know if you saw the speed at which Thomas put that in, but it was almost like his eyes just focused on this square and he filled it in green. And that is ludicrous. And the, the, I mean, let's let's think about this. How does he know this cell is green and not grey where my cursor is moving around there? Well, if it's grey, if it's grey, what happens? That's the next question. <laughs> I'm just trying to work it out. If it's grey, 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a re it's a real counterfactual example. If it's grey, we have to think about the two clue below it. This could be grey, but if this is grey, then those two would both be green. One to avoid a two by two, one to make this two clue correct, and this group of grey cells would be isolated from the rest of the grid. If this is grey and this is grey, on the other hand, this becomes green, and then this has to be grey, and then this has to be green. I can't see why that's immediately ruled out. Oh no, right, okay, no, I'm, I'm overcomplicating this. The reason that, that Thomas can enter in this as green is he's looking at this row look where we've got six greys and it's not possible for both of those cells to be a grey and therefore you can't make a two by two. So that's how he's got this to be green. Okay, I, fi I figure that out, I do understand that. I'm at least pleased that he's having to pause here. Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, hang on, right, so what's he doing as a result of that? Right, that's, that's fascinating. So what he did, I think what those purple were, were they were considering a pattern and, and then ruling it out. So what he did was, let's go back 10 seconds. He, he made maybe another 10 seconds. Let's try and get the purple in there. God, this, that was only, look how quickly he's doing this. It's just mad. Let's get that purple back. Make the purple come, Thomas. Do the purple thing. Come on, do the purple. There we go. Right. So he, 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 he notes that if this was grey, this will be green now. This will need to be grey. Why would that be need to be grey? Because it needs to escape. Yes, this, this domino of grey needs to attach the rest of its friends. So that would be grey. Both of these are green. This, this area of the grid is unconnected with its friends. Oh, good grief. Yeah, I've, I can see it. The count is wrong. Right. So we get, um, we've got two here and five greys here. So we've got seven greys in the column. But this area of grey is not connected to the grid. And the only connection available is, is via this column, column 13. So it's going to have to come across here and connect. So that is how Thomas has got that. I vaguely remember doing that myself, actually. Um, but but Thomas is doing it. I mean, Thomas did it almost instantly, which is so depressing. I wouldn't. Uh, it's just <laughs> it's just maddening. It really is. So you can see there's a lot of little two by twos here, two by two avoidances. Another counterfactual looks like. So he's instantly ruled that out as possible. Let's just go back and have a quick look at. So he considered. Yeah, you can see there's a sort of X-wing. I remember this as well. There's an X-wing of greys and greens going on in these two cells and these two cells. And by X-wing, I mean, if this is gray, that is gray. So if this is gray, ah, it's beautiful. It's actually beautiful setting as well as beautiful solving. Because if this is gray and this is green, because this is green, this this little area here, this, this sort of moose head or sort of antlers, is not connected to the rest of the tapper. So it has to correct, connect to the rest of the tapper via this, but we've just made this green. So it can't. So that's in instantly what Thomas spots. So he try, he's going, in a moment, he's going to try this as gray and try, that forces this to be green and instantly you can see it's wrong and therefore instantly he corrects it. I mean, these are things that it's just brilliant, isn't it? It's just quite brilliant. So now the tapper is very nearly done. And Thomas still has a bit of time left to finish. So that's going to be interesting. Let's see what he does next. So... And even for somebody as good at scanning as Thomas, this is not trivial. Yeah, ones and sixes needed over here. I remember I, I managed to force, I think I got this digit at some point and I knew there was a one in one of those two and therefore it had to be there, but I can't remember how I did that. Okay. 
Okay. And still, still pausing. Ah, oh, that's that three I mentioned earlier. So that gets filled in. So that's going to do all of these, I think. Four, seven, three. That pops over here, and there's a whole chain of things going off off the back of that. This is all fairly standard Sudoku, albeit done at ridiculous pace. So what we need there, we need twos, fives, and sixes, but you can see yeah, none of that seems to me to be a bit... Oh, he knows that's a two, does he? Why isn't this a two? Oh, there's a two in the column, you see? <laughs> These are things world Sudoku champions don't miss. Um, okay, three, four, five, he's looking for there. So that is... Also allows him to place the four. Twos and threes missing from that column. Yeah, that forces this to be black. Oh, I almost got that quicker than Thomas. Um, because this couldn't be a two or a three. There's a two or a three in the column, in the row, even. Um, okay. So now... Spotted somehow, he spotted something about where a seven go. Oh no, five, seven, two. Oh, he knows that apparently. One, five, he can do all of that. And it, he's very nearly finished now. I actually can't wait to read the comments on this video, assuming they're kind. But what, what I'm more interested in is how many of you have had a go at this and how many of you are therefore appreciating what we're watching here, which is just, it's sort of IQ-tastic. Uh, four, five, okay, I can't see how to do that. I'm quite pleased that Thomas can't either. Okay, so that's, he's figured out that somehow. He's done all the tapper now, the tapper is finished, so it's simply a case now of scanning all of this nonsense and filling in the puzzle. One, uh, oh, wow. Okay, that's a seven. I can see that. That gets five. So we need three sixes up there, which is doable, actually. And Thomas does it. That's become a two. That becomes a three. And this is this little clue here is still resisting. Look, we've known from the start this is a one or a four. One, two, four, seven. He needs in that column. Oh, that's so. This is a six, I think. Yep. I mean, that's the other thing. Thomas is using our software to do this, and he doesn't use our software as a rule. So this software is alien as well. Two, three, four. That's a four, yeah, okay, this this row's done, and Thomas sees it instantly. There we go, and the puzzle is very close to being finished. Let's get ready to pause the video. I think that's it. It's done. I don't I think he just does a quick scan. Oh, and it says it doesn't look right because the um because the software doesn't understand that this is uh, a tapper Sudoku and it, the software is looking to check that there's 1 to 14 in every uh, row, row and column, which there isn't. Um, but I've no doubt this is correct. And that is how to, well, aren't we lucky? 15 minutes, 14.59 in fact, um, uh, is how long it took Thomas to finish that. And as I say, we're very, very lucky I think to have the chance to watch something like that and to appreciate his skill. Um, so let me know in the comments if you enjoy this. If you enjoy this sort of video uh, I'm sure that we can ask other great solvers. We have done a video in the past with Tan Tan Dai showing off her skills which was also fairly mind-blowing um, but it's something I'd be keen to do more of if if you want to see it. So let me know in the comments and um, yeah thanks for watching this one. Bye for now.